name is Jesse Jennings and I'm a content creator here at Plaid. Um, and I'm gonna be showing you these really cute fabric Mod Podge shoes today. Um, I also have Kirsten there who's gonna be answering any questions in the chat um, and relaying things to me as well. She's also a content creator here at Plaid. So she'll be able to answer all of your questions um, or tell them to yep. me. Yep. Um, I just wanna let everybody know it is Mod Podge month. So all month long in May, we celebrate Mod Podge. So Mod Podge day is on May uh, 14th. So every year we celebrate Mod Podge day. Um, but of course we like celebrate it all month long. So all of our classes outside of our paint night for the Michael's Finney classroom this month are all about Mod Podge. So um, I know we've got a lot of questions about this class. So um, hopefully we've got a lot of viewers today and hopefully you guys really enjoy it because I know people are excited about it. Um, and like Kelly said in the beginning, if you decide to post your project, if you decide to make these shoes along with me, make sure to hashtag make it with Michaels and hashtag plaid crafts because that's how we get to see all of the really fun projects you guys are making at home. Uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and let you know what supplies you'll need for this class. Okay, so first of all, what you'll need are some shoes. So these shoes um, I just bought at my local store, my local clothing store, but if you have like some old sneakers at home, you can go ahead and throw them in the wash um, and then kind of refresh them. The great thing about this fabric is that even if you have some colored shoes or something like that, as long as you got a good bit of surface area, um, you can just put fabric right over them and have a completely new pair of shoes when you're done. So this is a really great sort of like trash to treasure or sort of refresh, you know, reclaimed uh, project to do. So I have these shoes here. Mine are just some nice white canvas shoes that I got at my local store. Um, of course, I have fabric Mod Podge. So this is a really excellent product because um, normally when you're crafting, uh, you can't wash things. It's, I always like to say, if you hand make it, you should hand wash it. But this is an exception. When you um, craft things with Mod Podge fabric, you can put it in the washing machine, which is a total game changer. If you're somebody who's not really that into sewing, like me, I don't really have the patience for sewing and also I don't have a sewing machine. You can use Mod Podge fabric for making appliques, for adding fabric onto things, you know, always putting fabric to fabric. There's tons of different uses for fabric Mod Podge. So um, I highly recommend grabbing some if you don't have it already. I also have some super duper cute fabric that I bought at Michael's. So Michael's has fabric again, which is so exciting. So you can go get any fabric of your choice. This is just like a, a cotton blend. I think, oh, it's 100% cotton. So anything light and thin like this will work great for your shoes. Uh, but I have this really cute, fun, like springy summer floral. Um, and then I also just have some brushes. So you can use any brushes to apply Mod Podge fabric. You can use a sponge brush or just I have some regular paint brushes here. I should have a few sizes for like the larger areas and getting into the details, um, but whatever you have, if you have a sponge brush or something like that, totally fine. I've got some fabric scissors. So um, if you're someone who works with fabric a lot, you probably have some great fabric scissors. Um, but if you're new to working with fabric, you just wanna make sure you have some really sharp scissors because you've got like some dull, like gooey craft scissors at home. It may not cut through the fabric as crisply and as cleanly as you want them to. And then I also have a pencil. So um, just go ahead and grab a pencil. You can use like a ballpoint pen or something too, or maybe like, again, if you're a seamstress or someone who likes to sew, you can grab some of like your fabric chalk, whatever it is that you will mark your fabric off with, but I'm just gonna use a regular mechanical pencil here today. So um, I also note too that my surface is covered with, this is just like a big piece of paper. So. I always like to protect my surface whenever I'm painting or using Mod Podge, just to make sure that Mod Podge is permanent once it's cured. So I just don't want to get any of it onto my table here. Um, but I think that's it. So are we ready to get started, Kirsten? We are ready to go. We already have so many people and so many great questions. Oh, good. I'm glad. Well, please let me know if you want me to answer them. Or again, you can just go ahead and answer them in the chat. I know you, you know as much as me, probably more. <laughs> they, one that was a good one is, do you have to wash your shoe before you start doing the Mod Podge? Yeah, so I mean, it's always a good idea whenever you're doing any sort of fabric crafting, especially if it's new um, or if it's just, you know, got like some debris on it. Um, but whenever you get new fabric, you know, items, whether it's a shirt or shoes or whatever, if you often come to the sizing, which is just something they put in the fabric to keep it nice and clean, um, you know, in manufacturing and, and ship, shipping and everything to the store. So it's never a bad idea to wash it. But if it's a shoe that you're kind of like hesitant to throw in the washing machine, if you're not so sure if you want to wash it, um, it's not technically necessary. Just make sure they're fairly clean. You might want to just, you know, clean them with like a damp cloth or something to make sure there's no dirt or anything like that, especially if it's a pair you've worn before. The best part of that is we have the same answer. <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> That's how you know it's right. <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. So this is a pretty simple craft to do. The biggest part, as you can imagine, probably is just the tips and tricks to get your fabric to fit your shoe perfectly. So hopefully I'm gonna walk you through it a little bit and let you know the way that I do it and the way that my friends here at Plaid like to do it. 
um, which really should apply to most of the types of shoes you'll be working with at home. So, you know, if you have a different size or different shape or style of shoe at home, hopefully this technique, you'll be able to apply it to whatever kind of shoe it is that you're crafting with. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get started by grabbing my fabric. I've unrolled it here. Um, so like I said, this is 100% cotton, but it, it really doesn't matter as long as it's something lightweight and something that you has, you know, good fibers for adhering, you should be fine. I would maybe wouldn't use like a velvet or like something that or like, you know, satin or anything like that, that might not work as well. Um, but here's 100% cotton. So um, something that you can do with Mod Podge fabric that is really great, especially if you're making appliques and things like that is um, if you're someone who works with fabric, you know that fabric likes to fray. So um, that can be kind of tricky whenever you're cutting things out or cutting out small details and shapes and fabric, all the edges wanna fray and you can lose the shape that you wanted in the first place, especially if you're not sewing the edges. So a little trick for that is here, I'll show you. I've got my Mod Podge fabric. I'm just gonna do a little corner here to show you guys. Okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna cut off a chunk so I can, I can just demonstrate this real quick. So I'm gonna cut off a little chunk of my fabric just to show you guys what I'm about to do. So say this is my whole sheet of fabric that I have at home. Um, what you can do is flip it over Get your brush and your Mod Podge fabric, and you can thinly brush it onto the back of your fabric and let it dry. So what it does is it stays nice and soft, which is one of the benefits of using uh, Mod Podge fabric is that it stays nice and soft on your project. It doesn't harden or stiffen like a regular Mod Podge might. Um, it stays soft, but when you let it dry, when you go to cut it tomorrow or you know whenever you feel that it's dry enough, it won't fray. So what it's gonna do is since like, you can, can't even see it, when it dries, what it's going to do is it's going to hold all of those fibers together. So if I start, I could even cut out all these cute little flower details and it's not going to fray. Those fibers aren't going to start straying because it's all being held together by that coat of Mod Podge that I put on the back of it. So of course you can see it won't affect the front of your fabric at all. That's why you put it on the back. Um, so I would recommend, especially if you're not crafting right now with me, to lay all the fabric out that you're planning on using and put a nice, thin, even coat of Mod Podge fabric to the back and let it dry overnight. So if you're planning on crafting this tomorrow or later on, go ahead and do that in advance because it's really gonna make your life a lot easier. So we didn't let you guys know that before the class because you know we, we didn't really have a good way of doing that. So I'm definitely gonna show you how to do it without uh, adding the Mod Podge to the back of your fabric. But I just want you guys to know if you're planning on crafting later on, that's a really good step to do. It'll just, again, make everything a little bit simpler. Um, so again, just a little trick. It's great, like I said, if you're cutting out appliques or if you want to like cut out a letter or something out of this fabric and put it on a t-shirt, you want your letter shape to be just how you want it. You don't want the edges fraying. You don't want, you know, any of the corners coming undone. That's a really good little um, tip and technique for you to do. Okay, so I'm going to set my brush down and I'm going to show you how I'm going to start making a pattern um, for my shoe here using my fabric. So um, the great thing about doing shoes is that you have a left one and a right one and they're mirrored. So if you have a fabric like mine, that's a little bit busy, when you start to wrap your fabric around the shoe, it may be a little bit hard to see where your line is. So what you can do is use the back. Oops, let me move this. You can use the back and since your two shoes are exactly the same, whatever you make on this one will transfer to this one and whatever you do on this one will transfer to this one perfectly because your two shoes are identical. So just a little bit of a tip or a trick to make it easier for you guys. If you have like a light fabric and you just want to go ahead and just, you know, trace your pattern right on the top of it, feel free to do that too. I'm going to show you a great way to hide any, you know, pencil marks you may have later on. Um, so that works as well. But again, if you have something kind of busy like me, that's just a good little tip. So, so just really you, quick. Oh, yeah. sorry. I hate, I hate to interrupt. So really quick, just because it, it looks like this is the most technical part because everyone is in love with these shoes. So yeah. a little bit slower, just explaining how to kind of get that pat or not the pattern, but the fabric for the toe and all that, that you just kind of went over. Um, yeah. So I'm going to get really into detail with that. I'm going to show you exactly okay. how I'm going to work around all these, you know, um, curves and things like complex curves and all the things that make up a shoe that it kind of can be hard to wrap your mind around. How do I get that to lay so evenly on my shoe? Because it's kind of a weird shape. It's not just like a t-shirt. I totally understand it. Um, so like what I was saying is the great part about having shoes and crafting with shoes is that you have their mirrors of each other. They are identical, but they are mirrors of, of each other. Just like I said, I don't know how better to describe it. That's um, perfect. So, yes. So normally you would want to make it exactly like, I'm just laying it across to kind of demonstrate. You don't want to make your pattern exactly like your shoe. Cause if you tried to reverse your pattern, it would be flip-flopped. But since you have two shoes left and a right, you can make your pattern backwards on here. And it's going to fit this one exactly when you flip it over because they're identical. 
that, that is sense? perfect. Yes, awesome. that makes perfect sense. Okay, good, good. I'm glad. Okay. So well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to lay an area of my fabric out. I'm just going to start on this front section. So, you know, all shoes are made up of different sections. That's just how they're manufactured. So you can see there's stitches here that kind of breaks up this section. That's how they made this shoe. And we're going to kind of follow that to make our own pattern. We're just kind of kind of add to the shoe, just like if we were there at the factory making it. Um, and then, of course, there's this section here that goes around the back. And there's a seam there that separates it. And then there's another part here that makes up this. And then we have our little heel part as well. So we are going to use that as our guide. We're going to use the same shapes that make up the shoe for our pattern for our fabric. So if you have lace up shoes, it'll be the same thing. There'll be a separate area of canvas or whatever your shoe is made of below it. And then that section of the two laces will be two separate sections. It'll be the same type of deal. So hopefully this will be easy to apply to whatever size and shape shoe you have or style. Um, so I'm going to just lay it on top. I'm going to focus on this front section. Like I said, I'm going to lay it on top and I'm just going to mark off a big area to make it a little bit more manageable. So I just want to cut down my fabric. So you want to make sure you're being pretty generous. You don't want to run out. So I'm going to kind of mark it there and it's kind of hard to see on zoom, but I can see it in real life. So just as long as you guys can see it at home, your own, your own markings, you're, you're fine. So I'm just marking it. I'm just cutting out a square, like I said, to make it a little bit more manageable. So I don't have this big piece of fabric that I'm trying to work with. And I'm just going to trim it down. And again, you can see how well these scissors work because these are my fabric scissors. So it's nice to have a nice sharp pair if you're doing fabric crafts. So I'm going to set this aside. So now, like I said, I have this nice smaller piece that's going to be way easier to work with. So um, something to think about when you're working with fabric um, is that some fabrics are flexible and some are not. Some are going to be stiffer. So um, when you're working with cotton fabrics like this, this is something I learned here at Plaid from my friend Sherry. Um, it's not going to be stretchy this way, and it's not going to be stretchy this way, but it will always stay stretchy diagonally. So you guys see that? The way the fibers are stitched together, it, it's not, it doesn't want to stretch this way, you know, left and right, and doesn't want to stretch this way up, to, up and down, but diagonally, it's going to be really flexible. So we're going to keep that in mind when we start making our pattern areas where we want it to be flexible, and then areas where it doesn't need to be flexible. So again, we'll get into a little bit of that as we go, but just something to keep in mind if it's a little trick that I never knew before. So it's, it's really helpful when you're doing fabric crafts. So I've got my fabric here. And like I said, I'm going to be marking on the back so I can see my marks better. And I'm going to lay it on my shoe. So you might want to put something on the inside maybe to kind of keep it taut if it's something that kind of wants to collapse like mine. You just want to make sure you have that full shape of what it's going to be like when your foot's inside. So you can kind of put your hand in there or stuff some you know, newspaper or whatever it is you have at home, you can stuff in there to just kind of keep it sturdy, keep it supported. So I'm gonna lay my fabric here, make sure I have all of the area that I'm about to make the pattern for covered. So I just wanna make sure it's all covered. I'm not gonna run out of fabric on any of my sides. And then I'm going to feel around and I'm gonna make little marks on the seam so I can feel where it's meeting the rubber and I'm just marking with my pencil to make a custom pattern with my fabric. So you can kind of, you know, make sure you hold in the same place. You can kind of peek as you go if you feel like you need to and make sure you're kind of, you know, tracing the right area. And I'm going to go all the way around here and I'm just marking, give yourself a little bit of extra room. That's always a good idea because you can trim it off later, but I'm just feeling my shoe, feeling under this nice cotton fabric where the edge of my shoe is where the, the sole begins. Someone had a great question, Jess. She said, yeah. could you make the pattern out of a piece of paper and then use that paper to make several patterns on different fabrics? You totally can. That's a great idea. Um, I always like making pattern out of fabric just because it's flexible and paper is not as flexible. So for me, I'm not really a seamstress, so I don't know a ton about patterning and sewing, things like that. This is just kind of the way that my head works better because the fabric, like I said, can wrap around it. But paper, um, a paper pattern is great too. You can even use a scrap piece of fabric and make your pattern and then transfer it onto paper and save it for later. So if you have a few different, you know, pairs of shoes that are the same style, you can make just, that's a great idea. Do tons of different fabrics on all your shoes. That sounds really That's a cute. great idea. Yeah, hang on to that for sure. Great. So you don't have to do this all over again next time. <laughs> I know. I love the idea of like basic white fabric could make a pattern. Yes. Yeah. Great idea. I love that. Great then hang idea. on to it in your craft room. 
Okay, so I'm continuing around the sole and I'm kind of peeking. You can see I'm making sure I keep my hand on here. I don't want it to slide. I want it to stay in the same place, but I am kind of peeking to see where I want to continue my line. So I'm starting to go up towards the top. And I'm being really careful. If you have a pen or something, you can totally use that. But like I said, I'm not a seamstress. So I'm kind of doing it the, the down and dirty way here. Um, so I'm following the top of my shoe. I'm feeling where the edges are. And if it's messy at the top, don't worry because we can trim it. And I'm, I'm gonna show you how to do some really simple sort of faux piping to cover up any sort of areas that got a little rough toward the top. So if you feel like your top's not gonna be perfect, don't stress because mine certainly is not going to be perfect. I just wanna make sure I have enough to cover my whole area. Okay, so I think I got enough here. I just wanna kind of go through and make sure I can, I can see where all my lines are. We don't wanna have any oopsies and mess up when I go to cut. So measure twice, cut once, just like in carpentry. So I'm just going through and I'm darkening my lines so I can see them. I'm following my pencil lines that I made or, or chalk or marker, whatever it is you're using. And I'm just making sure I can see all of the areas where I drew my lines. Okay. So you can see it's kind of a funny shape. It's not really what you'd expect it to be, but this is what we're gonna put on our shoe. And it's gonna be just enough to cover up this area and we're gonna trim off any excess. So I'm gonna start cutting out my shape, but I'm gonna go about a quarter of an inch around the edge just to give myself some wiggle room. So that way, if I got, if I, you know, felt it wrong as I was feeling around my shoe, um, or if it ended up shifting a little bit when I was trying to find my pattern, I have some room to kind of fix it later on without having to cut a whole new piece of fabric and wasting this swatch. So I'm gonna go about a quarter of the inch, an inch around where I have my line. And don't worry about your edges now. They don't have to be perfect because we can go ahead and trim them up later on. And again, this is where you'll start to have fraying. So if you're doing this class later on, if you're watching the recording, um, it'll be great if you have that layer of Mod Podge already dried on the back of your fabric. That's gonna be kind of a lifesaver if, you, if you're having issues with fraying. Okay, so now I have this. So what I'm going to do is flip it. Since this is the back, I don't wanna, it fits this one nicely, but I don't want it to go on here because that's the back of my fabric. So now for my other shoe, it's going to fit perfectly on the top side. So do you see how that works, guys? Hopefully that, that makes sense to you all now that I've kind of drawn it out and done it. Does that make sense? Do to it yourself? one more time, Jess. It's so perfect. The visual yeah. is perfect. Do it one so more this time. This is the back. Yep, this is the back where we cut it. I have my line and it fits here perfectly, but womp womp, we have the back side facing up. If we try to flip it, it doesn't fit our shoe anymore. It doesn't fit if there's areas that are poking out but when we flip it over to the other shoe, since it's perfectly mirrored, it is a perfect piece of fabric to cover the front of this shoe here. Perfect. Awesome. Very, very clear. Thanks, good, Jess. Good. I'm so glad. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so now's the fun part. This is my favorite part when we start to apply the fabric. So I always like to start in one area and kind of work my way across that area. So again, we're focusing on this panel of fabric here on the front of my shoe. So Whatever you know, panel you're working on now, it'll be the exact same idea. So I'm gonna open my fabric Mod Podge and I'm gonna start at the toe. So I'm gonna dip my brush in or, or sponge brush, whatever you've got is fine. And I'm gonna start right at the toe. And this is where you can kind of, you kind of wanna start being um, careful. I don't wanna get any on the rubber and that's how I'm gonna know where all of my excess is. I'm kind of just going right up to the sole. And then I know later on, whatever is not glued down is what I wanna trim off. So I'm just going right on the edge of my sole here. And I'm just gonna do the toe, just the little tip of the toe right now. And we're gonna work our way up. So I'm just applying this to the tip of the toe, the first inch or two, but I'm getting it really close to the sole here. Okay, so now we have this nice, I got a little dummy there. Um, nice little even coat. I let my brush sit out. That's why I'm getting these dried pieces. I should have washed my brush. Um, this nice coat of Mod Podge fabric right here. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to remember that we gave ourselves some wiggle room, um, which some people call seam allowance. We're not really gonna have seams here today. So it's kind of like a fake seam allowance, um, but I'm gonna lay it down, make sure it's where I want it, make sure you know, it's how we measured it before. And I'm going to press down. So don't forget, we gave ourselves about a quarter of an inch. So we can leave that hanging off for now. So you wanna press that down, you can stick your hand inside the shoe too to make sure you're getting it nice and flush, but you want to press it down and make sure 
you know, get your fingernail in there, or if you have some sort of plastic tool or the end of your brush, even you can get in there, make sure that it is getting right into that crevice there where the fabric meets the sole of your shoe. You just want that nice flush adhesion. So the great thing about um, Mod Podge fabric too, is it'll, it's a little bit tacky. So right from the get go, it'll kind of stay in place. It won't want to slide around or shift like a lot of glues do. Um, it keeps it there really nice and firmly. So now's a good time to, um, if you feel like you've got it in the wrong place, you can just sort of manipulate it, make sure that it's going to cover, make sure you check out your sides, make sure it's gonna cover er everywhere where you want it to. You don't wanna run out of fabric, like I said. So now's a good time to sort of readjust. Like mine was a little bit off, so I wanted to pick it up and make sure that it's gonna cover everywhere. Now's a good time to do that. Cause once you kind of start laying it down, you're not gonna to wanna to pick it up and readjust it. It's gonna start adhering and start bonding. So you wanna make sure we, we change anything now. Okay, so it's nice and stuck there. Again, I'm kind of paying really close attention because this is gonna be where it is. From now on, we're gonna keep just gluing up and it's gonna be harder to change it up. So I just wanna make sure the toe is in the right place and I got it nice and stuck. Okay, perfect. So now I'm gonna gently pull it back. I don't wanna pull it off, just pull it back and continue adding my Mod Podge fabric. And you wanna make sure you get right under there too. You don't wanna have any areas where there's not Mod Podge. Make sure you get right up under there to where you had your Mod Podge before. You don't want any gaps there. And I'm gonna do another inch or two above that, going right to the edge of my sole. You want a nice, even, generous coat of Mod Podge. Make sure I get in there, go right to the sole. The Mod Podge, the fabric Mod Podge is one of my favorite formulas. I don't know why, but it just brushes on so beautiful and so nice. It really does, Kirsten. I, this is my favorite one. It's so versatile. You can do so many things with it. Definitely. So now I'm just continuing, guys. You can see I'm pressing down. You can see how nice it adheres. It's like it's just so flush and the fabric, since it's going fabric to fabric, it's just fitting it so perfectly. That's why I was saying earlier when someone mentioned paper pattern, which again, if you're really into sewing, you probably are so used to working with paper patterns and your brain can kind of understand how to translate it later to fabric. But for me, I need that flexibility to really stretch across a 3D object like this for me to kind of like, again, get my brain to figure out exactly where it can go. So I, I, need, I need a little bit of that like flexibility, if that makes sense. Makes so I'm, and again, I'm getting my sense. fingernails, yeah, right into the edges there. I want to make sure I have that nice, nice flush adhesion. I'm sticking right in there, make sure it's all nice and together. And I'm going to keep going again. I don't want to peel it off of where it's already glued. Then I'm just going to keep working my way up this section of my shoe. So again, if you have a different shaped shoe, this hopefully will be the exact same you know, idea, you'll just have a different shape. It won't be this big front panel, it might be a smaller, you know, toe panel on your shoe. If you have like a, something that has laces or like a, you know, one of those Converse style shoes, um, it might look a little bit differently, but hopefully it'll be the same general idea. So I'm just continuing all the way up. I went up another inch or so with my Mod Podge, making sure I get it right all the way down to the sole. You can see how already it's starting to fit really nicely. We're gonna go trim that later but already it's really sticking so well and it's just so flush to the shoe. It looks so nice. It almost becomes part of the shoe. If you've not worked with the exactly. fabric Mod Podge, it is amazing. Yeah, definitely. I love that. It does feel, it already feels like it's part of the shoe. It's, it's really stuck on there. Again, you could peel it up and readjust it now because it's still wet, but it really is nice. It's a nice and tacky in a good way. Definitely. So now I'm gonna continue. I'm gonna go kind of here on the side and make sure I'm getting all those details. And like I said, that's why I had a few brushes here in the beginning. Um, if you wanna grab a smaller brush, I'm, I think I might actually switch. So I'm just gonna to switch to a smaller brush so I can get into these details here. Make sure I have fabric Mod Podge everywhere that I want it and all those little crevices so that my fabric can, will stick there. Wherever you want your fabric to be is where you should put that Mod Podge right now. Just going, and I'm kind of ignoring this right here, This piping that is already on the shoe. I'm ignoring that a little bit because like I said, I'm going to show you how to do some really simple faux piping with Mod Podge um, and we're going to cover that up. So that's why I'm not really paying attention to that right now. So again, I want to make sure I get all of my fabric in that little crevice there. Again, I'm using my fingernails, but like you can use the end of your brush to do this, you know, 
kind of like burnishing it almost into the edges of the seams of the shoe. Get my hand in there so I can really press down. And then the same thing on the other side. Everyone has so many cute ideas, Jess. I think people are already okay. starting maybe baseball caps, t-shirts, denim cute. jackets, such cute things for the summer. I love that. And I know like um, fabric patches are really coming back into style like for denim jackets and even for jeans and stuff. This is a Definitely. really easy way to make like no sew patches. You can, you know, paint things on fabric and cut them out and make them into patches or just use really cute patterns, fabrics like this and cut it out and you don't have to sew at all. You can just, you don't have to stitch or anything. You can just mod podge fabric it right onto your piece of clothing. Again, just getting into those corners. You want to make sure the corners are nice and stuck. So now I'm going to carefully add some more mod podge to this top area. And again, I'm making sure I get it all in there. I don't want to leave any any gaps in between because later on I don't want there to be you know I don't want my fabric to pull away from my shoe at all I want it to be nice and flush and even just getting right up to the edges I'm being generous but I want an even coat I don't want to glob it but I am I am being pretty generous with the amount of mod podge I'm using okay so now so now it's wanting to buckle a little because it's that really complex curve. So now is where we're glad we have it all, you know, pushed down here. We're going to pull it taut. We're going to just give it a little bit of pull. So we're going to use the flexibility of that fabric to make sure that it's fitting perfectly onto this little panel of shoe. And you can see there, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's really starting to stick into these corners, which is great, exactly what we want. Okay. Jess, at the end, don't let me forget, we're gonna have to brainstorm ideas. Everyone is so excited to add fabric to fabric and not have to sew. They're oh, asking awesome. for ideas at the end. So maybe we'll brainstorm just cute things we've made in the past. I love that idea. That's a great idea. Um, okay, cool. So now guys, you should have your whole first panel covered with fabric. So it's totally adhered, you know, it's not gonna come off. It's nice and tacky and I'm feeling and making sure that it's all exactly where I want it to be. So now, um, if you're taking your time with this project, especially if you're watching later, you can out this dry for a few hours just to kind of make sure it's really on there and nothing's gonna pull up um, before you start taking some sharp scissors and trimming carefully around the edges. Um, but you can do it while it's wet. I'm gonna go ahead and show you now just so you know what to do later, but you, you might see it start to pull up a little bit. And that's just, again, a tip for later on when you're doing this it's better to let it dry first and then it'll be really permanent on there and you won't worry about any of it peeling back up while you're, while you're trimming. Um, but like I said, I, I do wanna show you guys, I don't wanna leave you hanging. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start with my nice sharp scissors, trimming around the edges here. So I'm kind of just gonna peek under the edges, just very carefully. You don't wanna trim off too much. But I do have a trick. So if, if you have like white shoes like this or, or any color really, um, and you end up trimming off too much, I do have a little trick to kind of fix that little uh-oh if that happens to you. You don't have to worry about, you know, starting over and making a whole new um, pattern with your fabric. You can, you can touch it up pretty simply. And again, I'll show you that in a minute. But I'm just going really slowly and I'm peeking as I go to make sure I'm not cutting off too much or too little. I'm just following the rubber sole just snipping all the way around. And it might be even better too if you had like some sharp little like snippy scissors, if you need to go back and trim like that. But it, again, it is just important to make sure you're using fabric scissors so they're nice and sharp for this part. If you have dull scissors, this really won't work very well at all. If you're using just like some, you know, uh, inexpensive craft scissors or something like that, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be as successful. So make sure to grab yourself some really sharp scissors um, or some nice fabric scissors if you're doing something really detailed like this. So again, I'm just going back and I'm trimming. You can see how it's really nice and stuck. It's not pulling off at all, which is nice. The Mod Podge fabric gets tacky right away, but if it was completely dry, it'd be even better. So I'm just going around the edge and I'm trimming, trimming. 
And that's why you can see we really helped ourselves out earlier when we were doing the Mod Podge fabric right up where we want it. So that's why I said earlier, wherever you want your fabric to be is where your Mod Podge should be because it gives us that great guide to trim it. So now we don't have to worry if there was, you know, Mod Podge everywhere, we'd be having to pull it up and be gluey and we'd have to decide for ourselves or we want to trim. But now it's kind of like doing the work for us because just the part that is flopping away from the shoe is the part that's not glued. And that's the part you want to trim. I'm just going right along the edge here. And then if you find that you're having little bits and pieces sticking up, you can grab a, a thin brush and kind of touch those up with your Mod Podge and push them down. It's really easy to do. And I can continue up around this edge. You can see that popped up a little, no, no big deal. I can touch it up with some more Mod Podge. I've been kind of rough with it. So I'm not super surprised that it's wanting to pop up a little. And again, that's because it's still wet. If I let it dry, that wouldn't be a problem. So I'm gonna kind of start up here. I'm gonna make sure I don't cut too much. And I'm gonna start there so I can kind of get a better idea of where we're gonna be trimming up here. So now I can see better. You guys see how I did that? I kind of cut right there so I don't have such a big panel blocking it. And don't forget, I'm going right up to this piping on the shoe. I'm just gonna trim around, following that piping. Making sure I'm not cutting too much. If you feel like you've got some excess, you can go ahead and trim it up just to make your life a little bit easier so you can see better. But I'm just following around the edge of this. And this, you know, it's one of those crafts where you may not get it perfect the first time and that's okay. Um, it may take a little bit of practice, but I bet you you'll be happy with your results no matter what. And like I said, I can show you a really simple way to touch this up. So if you have like a little bit of a mistake here or there, or you, you overcut um, in an area or something, a really easy way to go ahead and fix that. So you can see here, I just went along and I trimmed all the part that wasn't stuck down already. And I can even go back with some more Mod Podge and just stick it in there, make sure everything's perfectly stuck down. I can even add some Mod Podge into those edges there to kind of seal it too. Someone had a good suggestion, Jess. They just said those really little tiny baby scissors that maybe quilters yes. or, or sewers use would yes. just get into all those little nooks and crannies on the shoe. Totally. I thought that was a great idea. Definitely. That is such a good idea. Like the little snips you use for like sewing yep. and stitching, those would yep. be perfect for something like this. It would That's just be easier I... to get into. Yeah, yep, perfect. Now, someone did have, this is kind of a cute technical question. So yeah. let's say right now you maybe miscut and something messed up. Is the Mod Podge still wet enough where you could pull that fabric back and cut a new pattern? Um, you would probably want to reapply Mod Podge. But like I said, yeah. if that happens, you can either A, cut a little slip, sliver of fabric and just try your best to match the pattern and just sort of patch it. Or if Sherry, will you grab me some multi-surface paint really quick? Maybe some green. Um, I'll show you a really easy way you can touch it up. Just grab some folk art multi-surface paint, which works really well on fabric and just whatever matches your shoes. So if you're using a blue fabric, just find a blue that matches or, you know, mix it. You only need a tiny, tiny bit. So mix something that matches, you know, whatever your fabric color is, um, is the color you want to use to touch up, but I can show you. That's a, a great idea. Great idea. So say here, I'll mess up really quick so I can kind of show you what I mean. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> no, it's okay. I love to be able to, here, you can see this one. Thanks, Sherry. Um, so here's some um, multi-surface paint. So this is classic green, which is great because I have lots of green in my fabric. So say I went here and I said, oh no, and I cut too much and I had, it's already sticking down. I can't even get, get it to mess up. It's already glued. Um, so say I had like a big gap there and I was like, oh man, like I don't want to have to go back and do this whole thing over again. You can just grab some folk art multi-surface paint, which you can find at Michael's dip a little bit in and just dab some paint in there to cover up. If you had like bright purple shoes and you were trying to make them yellow, obviously uh -huh. that purple would really stand out. So you can just dab some little areas of paint in there and it'll just cover it up and you won't even notice that there's a little bit of a gap. You won't see it at all. Just try to match your fabric um, to the paint color and it'll be a really easy way to touch that up without having to go back and redo that whole thing. That is the greatest tip. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, no problem. Um, so like I said, you can see it's already like really stuck down to answer your other question. It is gonna be hard to pull this back up because it's starting to, to dry already. But that is basically the technique you would use for all of the panels that you want to add fabric to. So this one will be even simpler because it's pretty flat. It's not such a complex curve. Um, this you know heel would be super simple to do because again, it's just like a nice flat area. You would just 
kind of grab a strip and put it right on there. Um, but I am going to show you how to do some really fun. You can see here what we're missing is that piping. I'm going to show you how to do that really cute piping to add to your shoe. So we go ahead and I'm going to grab another. I'm going to grab a nice long, I'm going to say about one inch uh, width strip of fabric. So do you guys remember in the beginning when we talked about how um, if you pull it left to right, it's taut. And if you pull it top to bottom, it's taut. But if you pull it diagonally, you get some really awesome stretch. So now this time that's really gonna come in handy when we're trying to follow this crazy curve all the way around this panel of our shoe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cut a more manageable piece of my fabric, just like we did before. And you might wanna grab a ruler or something. I'm kinda gonna eyeball it. I do recommend probably using a ruler for this part, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut a strip about a one inch, maybe one and a half inch thick strip of fabric going diagonally down my fabric. So don't forget, because you want to have that nice stretch. That's what we're looking for to make that um, little piece of piping a little bit simpler for us. So again, I'm eyeballing it, but it's probably a good idea to grab, grab a ruler or a straight edge or something. Okay, so you can see it's so stretchy now because we cut it at a diagonal. So it doesn't mess up our pattern at all. It's still gonna match really well, but we have this nice stretchy piece of fabric that's gonna be really easy to put around all those curves. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna grab some of uh, my Mod Podge fabric. I'm gonna brush it onto the back. And I'm gonna start on the bottom edge. It doesn't matter which edge you start on, but for me, I'm gonna start on the bottom edge. And I'm just applying a nice even coat. You don't have to do a ton, but just a nice even coat. And then I'm going to fold it in. So carefully, just like if you're making real piping, if you're about to you know, iron this and fold it and put it through a sewing machine, it's the same concept, but we're just doing with our, our fabric Mod Podge instead to make our lives a lot easier. So I'm gonna fold it in. And you can see it's already starting to like be really stretchy and flexible, which is good. So it's gonna make it really easy to apply to our shoe. So I'm just gonna press down and make sure it's nice and even. It's already starting to curve because it's so stretchy. Um, nice and even. And then I'm just gonna trim it because I think mine's a little too wide for what I want. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna trim it a little bit. So I have a little bit narrower of a strip here, but again, depending on the shoe you have, you might have like a really wide area you wanna add this to, or yours might be even smaller. It just depends on the style of shoe that you're crafting with. So just a little bit thinner and I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing again. I'm just gonna apply some more fabric Mod Podge and I'm gonna fold it in on itself again. And the reason we do that is then we don't have any, um, any fraying edges. We have a really nice, neat looking, um, you know, faux piping piece of fabric. So I'm gonna fold the top back down on itself. And again, this is just like how you do in a sewing machine, but you don't need a sewing machine. That's the best part. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so you can see, look, it's already really stuck together. It's ni a nice, neat strip now, and it just sticks so well. Like fabric to fabric with the montage fabric, go figure, sticks so well together. It almost like, it's like a magnet. It wants to stick together once you add that Mod Podge fabric. So I have this nice strip of piping now, and you can start adding that to the edge of your shoe. And since we made it so that we did it on the diagonal, we've got a nice stretch to it, which is going to help us majorly when we're trying to fit it around that complex curve. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna start on my edge. I'm gonna go right on where the piping already is on my shoe. And the best part is I'm covering up if there was any like weird raw edges here, that's all gonna get covered now with this strip of fabric. And this is just a bonus. That shoe looks absolutely perfect. Yeah, it could, it could really bonus. be done. Yeah. Absolutely, totally. Yeah, if you're, if you're done with this project, you can just leave it there. That's absolutely right. Um, or you could even do more. You could add more to this edge too to make it just like really super duper neat. Um, Definitely. Totally to so I'm just gonna stick it down, make sure it's nice and pressed down again. You can always grab some pins if that helps you, if you've got pins laying around anyway. But I'm gonna do my best to manipulate it and stretch it so that it goes around that curve. And that's when this, the fact that we did it on a diagonal really comes into play. That's how it's gonna stay nice and stretchy for us. And we're trying to curve it in these really complex curves here. Laura had a great idea, Jess. Wouldn't it be cute if you did a different fabric for this than the floral, just to have oh, different patterns? 
that's a great idea like a really cute like myth mix matched sort of look yes I think that would be such a cute I yeah I think cute idea really good idea or even like a solid like you could do like yellow or something you know just kind of coordinate it yeah that would be adorable or like denim would be so cute oh gosh (laughs) <laughs> such good ideas <laughs> we're brainstorming already <laughs> I know so look really quick here so you can see how it stayed in the shape I put it it's harder to pull up it's I amazing it the but it's totally flexible now because we use the diagonal which is an amazing amazing trick a great trick and back to what we kind of agreed on earlier that Mod Podge fabric to fabric formula is just it's so much thicker and it just does mm-hmm. it just what it does to the fabric is just amazing. It lets you work with it for, for a long time. Yes, yes, it's incredible. Okay, so you would just keep pushing it down, make sure it's nice and sticky. I'm working kind of quick, so it's wanting to pop up, but it's really easy for it to stay down. If you're, if you're a little more patient than I am today in this class, um, it'll stay on perfectly. And you wanna let it dry. You always wanna let it dry in between steps just to make your life easier. Um, it'll, just, it'll just be simpler that way. You always wanna let it dry. But again, I'm, I'm being impatient. So um, make sure this is stuck on. And then again, like I said, you're going to continue this around the rest of your shoes. So you can even leave it there. I kind of like the white part is cute too. Um, or you can continue the pattern all over the entire shoe. It's completely up to you. What you're left with are these really cute, completely custom one of a kind shoes that you made with all the supplies you already have from Michael's. Um, so yeah, that's it for the shoes. We have any questions about, about, how to make these Kirsten? Now one person had a great idea. Would lace or ribbon be considered fabric and work with this formula of Mod Podge? Totally. Absolutely. We've done lots of lace. Like you could add lace to a denim jacket, which would be so cute. Um, Or instead of making this piping, you can add ribbons to the edge to kind of clean up those frayed edges. Absolutely. That's a great idea. Anything that's, you know, fiber like that will work really great with Mod Podge fabric. Such a good idea. And then Jess, someone um, was asking, and I know you said it in the beginning, before you started this project, did you treat that fabric with Mod Podge and let it dry overnight? So you can see here, it's already dry, guys. Remember when I did this? So I did a little scrap to show you. It's always a great idea. Really, when you're when you're doing anything with fabric, I like to add some Mod Podge fabric to the back. You see how it's like a little bit shiny uh-huh. and it's a little bit tacky so because we just did it, you know, less than an hour ago. But if I were to go cut this now, you can see how the edges are fraying. I didn't put any on there. But if I were to cut it now, especially once it's completely dry, there is zero fraying. Do you guys see how clean that is? Perfect. And how zero long you just, just let that dry for a few hours so then you could work yeah, with it? Just so it's dry to the touch. That, but you can see here, like it's all the fibers are basically glued together now, but it's still nice and flexible. It's not like stiffened or something. Um, but there's gonna be, especially if you're like wanting to cut out little flowers and like add them to a purse or shoes or something like that, you're going to get a lot of like fraying going on. And so you definitely want to add this nice coat of Mod Podge fabric to the back of your fabric to keep that. Such a good tip. Will you hold those adorable, perfect shoes up to the camera? (laughs) Everyone wants to see every detail. There you go. So here's the back and we left the sides white just because I don't know, we just thought it'd be really cute. And then the front oh, is really them. easy piping, but yeah, super easy to do. Like I said, if you've got an old pair of tennis shoes, just clean up the soles and add some of your favorite fabric pattern onto them or denim or whatever it is you have at home and you have a brand new pair of shoes and it's super oh. easy to do. And it's one of a kind, which is awesome. Now, do you, another great question. So at the end, those are all dry. Are you going to apply a coat of fabric Mod Podge over the entire shoe? So it's kind of up to you. You can, and a lot of people do. Um, so I like this really matte finish and you can kind of see here, it gives it a little bit of a satin finish when you're done. So if you wanted to, um, you know, there's instructions on here for sealing your fabric. If you wanted to seal the whole thing with Mod Podge fabric, you definitely could. And that'll keep it really durable, especially if you're planning on putting it in the washing machine. I usually don't though, just because, I mean, it just holds it down so well without the ceiling, um, you know, aspect of it. And I like that really matte fabric look. So it's a little bit of preference for you. Perfect. But as durable, you don't need to top coat it. Yeah, I usually, I usually don't, you know, if you feel like maybe it's fraying a little bit and you want to get kind of give it a little more durability, go ahead and feel free to, you know, add a nice last thin coat of Mod Podge fabric to the top. And it, it really will help with the durability for sure. Such a great answer. 
Yeah. All right. Well, do we want to do some more brainstorming, Kirsten, or? Um, I'm sorry. I'm sitting here. We're brainstorming. We're having <laughs> such a fun time brainstorming yes. in the chat. So people awesome. have had great ideas. Baseball hats has been a great one, love which it. I love the idea. Yeah. Um, aprons, which we missed Mother's Day, but someone said a personalized apron for Mother's Day. Adorable. Great or idea. Mother's Day. That would be yeah. super cute. We actually have, I that's funny you said that, Kirsten, we have a Father's Day grill apron class coming up on Michael's Community Classroom. So I believe it's already up on their website. So make sure to check that out. We're going to do a special Father's Day dad um, using Mod Podge fabric, dad oh, grill perfect. apron or cooking apron or, you know, woodworking apron, whatever it is your dad likes to do, painting. Um, but anyway, it's funny you said that. Keep an eye out for that class too. It's coming up in the next couple so of weeks. So many good ideas. Yeah. And then another great idea in case someone didn't read the chat, someone said they could treat their fabric let it dry and then cut it into alphabet different letters and monogram okay. or personalize. Isn't that a great idea? So cute. Yes. Yep. Like you can, you know, monogram sweatshirts and things. If you have, if you're in a sorority or know someone who is, or even babies, you know, weddings, all kinds of great gifts. You can make um, monogrammed, you know, custom pieces without having to buy an embroidery machine or without having yep. to buy some sort of special cutting machine. You can do it yep. all yourself with just a little bottle of Mod Podge fabric. I love it. So many great ideas. Yeah. Well, thanks so much, guys. I had so much fun doing these shoes with you. Um, I hope you guys had fun too. Don't forget, uh, May is Mod Podge month. So all month long in Michael's Community Classrooms, we're talking about Mod Podge. Uh, Mod Podge Day is May 14th. So the class we have directly after um, May 14th on Michael's Community Classroom, we're going to have a really fun Mod Podge celebration. We're going to teach you lots of outdoor summer party decor using a bunch of different Mod Podge formulas. So make sure to check that out. Um, also, if you like painting or if you're interested in learning to paint, every Monday night at Michael's Mini Classroom at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, we do a really great beginner painting class that we call Paint Night Live. So make sure to check that out. I teach those classes. Kirsten teaches those classes. Yep. Also, Andy Jones, one of our resident artists here. Um, make sure to check that out if you haven't already. If you decide to post your uh, project when you're done, make sure to hashtag Make It With Michaels and hashtag Plaid Crafts. Um, and I think that's everything. Anything I left out, Kirsten? I don't think so. Everyone loves the class, loves the shoes. Awesome. I think they're making the other shoe as we speak. They absolutely enjoyed it. So Jess, thanks Good. so much. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye, everyone.